And now, Mexico bathed in glorious sunlight. And now we prepare for the biggest cheer so far of these finals as the host nation pick features in the quarterfinal number four of the compound women's competition. We can hear them going wild. Let's go down to meet the athletes. On target number one, representing Mexico. On target number two, representing Great Britain, Ella Gibson. The line judge for this matchup is Curtis Belusi. Well, how about that? So Mexico a have a 21-year-old to cheer Mexico, on. An easy pick for the host nation plot, uh, place here in the compound women's division. She missed ranking in qualification by a single place. Making her second finals well appearance. Of what home soil. She's got Ella to have Gibson a chance. Goes up against Ella Gibson, world well, number one, but not quite world the season she one. had last season. Only collected a bronze at the National Tour Finals in Great Britain last weekend, but has been preparing for this competition in Phoenix this week. Nine. Ten. Solid first shot by Daphne. We've seen so many matches, uh, the first arrows going low, like Ella did, but Daphne just started right in the middle. Nine. Heavy moments for uh, Gibson. Ten. She is a silver medalist. Getting ever more nervy as Quintero gets a second one in the middle as well. Ten. Perfect start for Daphne Quintero and listen to the Mexican crowd. If you had any doubts that they were going to be loud in this one, I think you can get rid of them now. Mexican Calderon, everybody cheering for home, home hero Daphne Quintero. Uh, I, I, I think the wind is starting to pick up here, to the Karen. Um, at the end of the last match, during the shootout, I had a feeling that the wind was blowing pretty strong. Looking at Tanya Galantine, and uh, I think the wind is picking up. Perhaps it's going to be the tone for the rest of the day here. Uh, despite that, Ella Gibson managed to find her way into the tent, and Daphne just clicked the line with her last arrow. Perfect third to start, two point lead. Very happy that the home crowd is going to be very happy with that. What a start for Quintero. Gibson to shoot first in the second. She's going to want to hunt this one down very quickly. Ten. Nine. Still got a little bit of nervous energy there, Cantero. If anything, it looks like Gibson has settled. Nine. 
just drifting off to the left, but she looked like she held on to that one for a bit longer. Yeah, we saw her arm moving a bit too much, and that's why she held longer to try to adjust the side, but it, it wasn't enough. Still, she caught a nine. Nine. So, Quintero maintains the lead, but it's cut in half. Just a single point now. But it does feel like Quintero kind of came in riding on a high with the crowd. And now it's just come down a little bit off that. Just showed a little signs of nervousness there, whereas Gibson seems to be going the other way in terms of the mindset. This can happen. It, it has happened to me in the past. When, uh, as, I, as I said earlier before, the beginning of the match can be the trickiest moment because you have the nerves really high, and then you think that after the first end, you're kind of like you relax a little bit and you think, okay, now I got this. The, the toughest part is over. But then I think you might also, let's say, relax too much, lose a little bit of focus. Maybe this has happened with Daphne. Uh, and what we're seeing here, what we saw in the previous two matches, um, both archers not quite happy with some of their shots, and I'm sorry to say the only one who's on a league of her own is Sarah Lopez. Put a benchmark down in the first quarter-final here. And she faced Gibson in the final in Tlux Carla last year. Gibson trailing. Starts end number Ten. three in the middle of the target. Interesting to note this pink little piece on Quintero's string touching her nose. Uh, Gibson's got a, a similar uh, thing on her string, just just darker, not so easy to see, but it's a it's a nose button um, because string placement is crucial for archery, both compound and recurve. And this uh, nose button is kind of a uh, a little pointed star that just gives you a very acute feeling of where the, the string is placed. It's interesting to note both archers using this, this little device. Ten. And still some heavy breathing by Quintero. Nerves are still there. Nine. Door opens again for Quintero, though. Oh, oh another perfect. Far enough in the first end, perfect. She's got another one in the third and has reopened that lead. Interesting history between these two. They've met twice before. Uh, the first time was at the Medellin stage in uh, 2022, which gives you 147 to 141. This is a repeat of one of the quarterfinals from Clutch Carla last year in the Iron Archery World Cup finals, uh, where Gibson won that one as well. But much tighter, 148 to 147. So, Perhaps absolutely, absolutely. You, you don't want to miss twice at home. Uh, one is painful enough. And uh, a contrasting fortune is in the last arrow. This and uh, Ella Gibson, she seemed to have a very good shot and shot a nine. She was startled. And Daphne was a little bit too quick, but she was relieved and happy with hitting the 10. Gibson trailing by two as her work cut out for her two ends remaining in this quarterfinal. Ten. Ten. And the key thing here with this field so wide open, eight archers all starting this competition in contention, it's quite conceivable that Contera can go on from ten. here and not miss the ten. So there's nothing Gibson can do. Yeah, uh, compound sometimes is a game of who makes less mistakes. And um, Quintero seems to be dialing in now. Nine. 
And another drop point from Gibson. I think she feels this one is absolutely slipping away from her here. Quintero needs to contain her confidence though, not let it overflow. And another perfect from her. And uh, well, just look at the difference that has made to the scoreline. Now a three point lead with three arrows to go. Gibson needs a mistake from Quintero, doesn't she? It's a big mistake. Uh, has got this on her hands. It, it's hers to lose now, really. Um, it, it was wrong a little bit. The movement now that Gibson's face as she walked out of the line, it was almost a disbelief, you know? Um, well, I know it's really hard. It's a very hard situation, but she just got to forget it all. And shoot a 30. Nothing less than that would, would, would do. And still, she needs some luck on her side because Quintero needs to make some mistakes. She needs to make at least three points in mistakes to give Gibson a chance. This is very much in the hands of Daphne Quintero on home soil, having lost to Gibson twice before in international head-to-heads, both times in Mexico. She has a big chance here to get a win and move into the semi-finals. Nine. And another drop point from Gibson, and the chances get even better for the Mexican. I think that was a little bit too quick for Ella Gibson's taste. Nine. It's enough for Quintero, it's enough. Ten. Quintero can afford another nine here. No. And that's exactly what she's got. She's got breathing space though. Still has that breathing space. A 144 possible for Ella Gibson with a 10. Ten. And she finishes Gibson. with that 10. And you have to feel that this is very much in Quintero's hands. Very capable of shooting a nine. Nine. And that's exactly what she's got. Three nines in the end was enough for the win. And Quintero gets her first victory over Ella Gibson. And just listen to that home crowd. What a moment in her career at 21 years of age, ranked world number 12, defeating Ella Gibson for the first time. After Ella eliminated her in Black Scala one year ago. What a moment for Daphne Quintero. Listen to this crowd, listen to this crowd. This has got to be one of the most special moments in an athlete's career, really. To be performing at this level, such an important competition in front of your home crowd. So beautiful to see. What a smile on Quintero's face.